Welcome to another new Sita video. If you like it, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell. Never forget our upcoming sessions. If you have any questions or hints, please leave a comment. Our certified QA experts will reply in time. It's never been easier to manage tests at scale than with X-Ray Test Management. X-Ray is a Jira native software test management app that ensures your testing and development teams are collaborating to achieve the highest quality products. With X-Ray, you'll never deliver broken or untested code again. X-Ray is a comprehensive test management solution that uses Jira native issue types to specify, organize, plan, and execute tests. With X-Ray, you can create your tests and add preconditions, organize them using the test sets or the test repository, plan your test strategy, and finally execute tests and report the status. Every single user by default has a right to create a dashboard. Now let us call this dashboard a testing dashboard so that we can just put all test related items here and just click on save. Right now, I'm keeping it private because I don't want to share it with anyone. Now, you do remember these kinds of dashboards of Jira, which are these inbuilt gadgets, which are already available. And when you have an add-on installed like X-Ray, you'll find specific charts associated with that. So, if you keep scrolling through, you will figure out your test-related gadgets uniquely. For example, look at this. You got overall test coverage, and you can simply click Add and add it to the dashboard, which we'll configure later. Let's get started by adding some of these gadgets and see how exactly we can configure a wonderful dashboard for testing. And for some reason, I'll be just looking forward to adding all the gadgets that we have relevant to X-Ray and probably some more. This is another one, which source cases the overall test coverage on the project, and then we have another one, which is overall test results. Assume you would like to see them. Again, this completely depends. The dashboard completely depends on what exactly you want to present to your audience. It depends on who your audience is, and you can look forward to selecting your gadgets accordingly. Another one is the requirement list. If you want, you can pull this, it will just display all the stories, which are associated with test cases. Not exactly a traceability matrix, but yes, just a list of requirements. If you want, you can include them. Also, you do have a test execution list. Let me add it. If you want to see the test plan list, which may not add a lot of value to your stakeholders or your management, but internally within the team. If you want to create a dashboard for the testing team, then this particular item would be of great help, because it will tell you what various test plans you have created. The test runs will show you how many executions have happened. You can add that. You can look forward to the run summary, how many executions like a test was executed multiple times, etc. You can again pull by test by type, test set, list, test list, or sort of thing. So, these are some of the important gadgets, which you do get from the X-Ray but not everything. For example, test plan matrix, you don't get that traceability. You don't get that, right? You can only get these things here, which are well defined. Now there are some interesting gadgets, which you get by default from Jira. Not necessarily from X-Ray, and you can use that to configure two parameters and see what the status is. So let me just add this additional gadget from Jira. This is not X-Ray specific one. Clicking on add, and we are pretty much done adding all our gadgets. Let's start configuring right from the bottom. The very first gadget we call out is overall test coverage, and here the first thing they are telling me to select is a project or a saved filter. Of course, if you have saved any filter, you can use that or just use your project in which you are working and it will go ahead if you have any other criteria to include. For example, if you have been given different statuses for different tests, which is certainly important, or if you would like to classify them by priority, or if there are any other criteria like epic titles, epic link flag, if any has any kind of blocker, you can showcase that. And it's not just limited to a gadget that can be called only once on a dashboard. Please remember, a gadget can be called multiple times to try out with multiple criteria. For example, what if I want to show test coverage with respect to priority, 
and with respect to status both? You can call this gadget one more time on the same dashboard and configure it for status. And this one you can configure for priority. So, let's go ahead. If you want to further filter out anything else, for example the environment, the version, or the test plan, you can filter out and only target one test plan or all of them. Even if you don't select this, by default it will pick up all the test plans, if you don't explicitly define it. But if you want to say for example, you just want to keep one of these test plans in your reports, then you must select one. I'll just ignore it right now and say all environments and click on save. Now, if you see based on the priority, it's giving me the overall test coverage. We have discussed this in our previous tutorial, so we won't be spending time understanding this report once again. And those who are coming to this tutorial for the first time, I would suggest watching the respective tutorials before looking at this one. Here I can go ahead and change the color of it. For example, I want to highlight it in amber, so the top bar here can be changed to different color to bring people's attention. If you would like to rename it, you can do that. But if you see, I have an option here to auto-generate the gadget name. That's the reason I'm restricted. So, let's disable this and save it. Now, it will give me a provision to allow me to modify the name. Let's see. Okay, we'll look forward to this later, because there are some configurations, which we need to rename Action. If this option is enabled, it will generate the gadget name based on its parameters. Otherwise, you can explicitly define a name for the gadget using the rename action. And for some reason, I don't see the rename action. I'll come back to it and later show you if you can rename this. The next one is the task coverage again, which I think I called this two times. So, these are the further parameters. If you see here, we did for these titles. Let's try doing it for other options. Sorry, this one is for priority. So, let's try with the status here and click on save. This one is on the status, right? Thus, do backlog done and progress. Of course your reports are waiting. You can see that. And here we have rename options. All I must do is refresh this gadget one more time, and I'll be able to see the rename option. That's not a challenge at all. Don't forget Jira is a cloud-based application right now. What we are using. So a refresh, a simple refresh can help you. I can say based on titles here. I can give a custom name that I'm interested in. And let's refresh this and see if we get the rename here. Okay. Anyway, I may have to refresh the internet browser. We'll come back to it. So overall test results, again I'm selecting the project. If I have any further filters, I can look forward to that and click on save. These are the overall test results. I have one passed, eight to do overall for inside this project, and zero executing right now. The number of tests failed is one and not applicable, probably as a folder is zero, right? This is how your class of donut chart can be populated and you can have a quick look on what exactly is going on. You can again use the rename option if you would like to name it again, right? Certainly this is another. The very helpful gadget is to showcase the execution list, and you can decide the fields that you might be interested in including. For example, the start date, end date, begin date, and sort of thing. So you can add any number of fields that you might be interested in to showcase at any point of time, right? Let's go ahead and click on save. If you see the execution list showcases, that is here. We got three items. Three executions have been performed. The current status of them is here. The begin dates were not captured. The test environment has been captured, but the environment was an additional field that we did not declare, and the test plan relationship is also shown. So, anyone can quickly come and see that anytime. These are the executions that are performed so far, and these are the current status and the environment covered. A lot of measurements can be derived just right from your gadgets. The other one is the test run list. This is executions, and this is several times a test was executed. So what's the difference between the execution and the run? Execution is an issue type in the extra team. When you create an execution, you pull out some tests under that, 
and you run it. But a test can be executed multiple times within an execution or outside execution, right? An execution as an issue type represents a collection of tests, and a test can be executed multiple times. So the run here is giving me the list of how many times a test was executed, and what were their possible outcomes. Here, I'm again going to do the same configuration, but here you do get further items like, hey, you want to see the highest problem, a high priority, medium priority, low priority. You can define and filter it out. I'm only interested in the highest priority runs, right? So if you want to create any filters, you can create them, and you can look forward to other filters too. If you want to filter by assignee, executed by status, component, etc. The reason I'm not using any filters here is that I hardly have some content in my project related to testing. So, if I apply a filter, it will further become less. But at any point of time, you can define your own meaning to a report for example. I'm interested only to see the high priority items. Just define it and call it out, a very custom report, so I'll just keep it specific. If you would like to have a date range, you can define the time frame or date, and you can only look forward to having a limited period or limited timeline data to be displayed on the dashboard. But I'll just keep it intact for everything. Again, you know the columns to display. You can set it up, and you can add whatever columns you're interested in, and let's click on save here. So right now, we have performed these three executions, in which these are the status, and the following are my details. Finally, the test run summary which we have here from the testing. So you can do it from the site filter, or you can use the issue picker. The issue picker will ask you for a test plan to capture or pull up the test execution, so I can just pull the test plan directly which is the superset of everything. So just making sure we don't miss out on anything. You can filter it out again, pull out the assignee or status, and if you want, you can group by any parameter. For example, I can use priority again, and just save it. So, this is my bar carf which is coming in just one column. That is medium because all my tests are just medium, and two runs are displayed. One is passed, and one is failed. You can even look forward to swapping this gadget, especially this one in the form of a table, which would make more sense to anyone. So, not all the charts give you this provision if you see. Only this one test run summary gives you the provision to turn your chart into a table, or a table into a chart. So, let's keep it as a table, or do you like more in the chart form? Now, we are going to make a chart, it looks very big, and doesn't look nice. Let's switch to the table again. Finally, I added another gadget from Jira, which is exclusively from Jira, that has nothing to do with X-Ray. And here you can pull out your filter if you have saved anything. For example, I'm pulling up the filter for the MFP board, and if the item is present on the board, then only it will appear. I'm not sure if all my items are on the board, because they might be in the backlogs as well. Let's pull out some of the information. For example, I would say assignee. I'm sure if I did that, using the priority, and for the Y axis I select issue type. I'll just keep it ascending, include 10 items, and save. If you look there's a quick list of everything what I have in my project, and it is saying, hey, the number of bugs you have is 4, and all 4 of them are medium. You've got some epics, you've got some executions here and they're all medium, so nothing has a different thing except for one story. Here, 7 are medium, 1 is the lowest. Kind of like a great statistic can be populated at any point in time to filter it out. Now, you may look forward to reconfiguring this and trying out something else. For example, issue type by priority, or issue type by status, right? You can say for example, I turn this out into status, and then save it. So, instead of priority now, it will talk about the status, right? Block, to do, done, backlog, in progress. If you want to show them in the right sequence, all you need to do is sort them. So, it depends on the filter again. Here also, I can rename it, and I would call it as issues by status, or you can give a more meaningful name, asperity choice, and I'll just reflect the color as critical, because I might be deflecting a lot of things. So, 
Change the layout. I'll call it out into three columns and just bring it up again. Arranging the gadgets is an art like how you display the data to the management because not everything just appears the way you like it. You may have to update them in a way that makes more sense to people and displays them in the right order. So you can look forward to arranging them in a sequence which makes more sense to anyone. Working on the project and may be interested to see for sure. This is how simple you can build a quick dashboard and populate different matrices and showcase the items again. Don't forget any of the gadget can be called twice just because you want to perform two different configurations and show multiple statistics at the same time. Right, that's it. Once you have defined all the configurations, click on Done, and your dashboard is ready to be shared and viewed. Test management shouldn't be a burden to your team. That's why over 4.5 million testers worldwide trust X-Ray to deliver the highest quality products faster than ever before. Break the silo between testing and development and integrate them under the same tool set with X-Ray for Jira. If you like it, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell, never forget our upcoming sessions. If you have any questions or hints, please leave a comment. Our ISTQB, ITK, X-Ray, and TestRail certified QA experts will reply in time or even produce a separate video about your topic. Please also check out our other over 200 videos about software quality. Happy testing, see you next time.